Uh, hello, good evening, uh, good morning. Welcome back to season two of uh, The Four Direction. I'm glad to be back uh, uh, with you again. Uh, continue on our inspiring episode and show. And today we're going to talk about poetry in general, poetry, diplomacy, and how writing uh, can transform other people's life and the process of writing itself and immigration, how it can bring the best out of other people's talents. Uh, I'm joined by my friend uh, here, Andran Amert Hagem. He's a poet, he's a writer, uh, he writes poet and he's also a diplomat. Welcome, uh, Andran. Good morning, good morning, Mary. Lovely to see you and uh, to have a chance to talk about this passion. Thank you, for... Thank you so much for giving us for your time. Uh, first, let me know why is, why poetry? Why did you choose to write poetry? Well, you know, I grew up with poetry. Uh, my father was a poet, and and he was a diplomat as well. And my and uh, I have a great uncle who was a poet and an editor of uh, the poetry magazine Poetry London, which he founded in 1939 in London, just before the war. And that was the only poetry magazine published during the war and under the Blitz and in that very dark time, he was able to, to get poetry pub out and distributed uh, every month. And um, he published the greatest young poets and, and painters of the day. Anyway, this is a service um, during a very dark time. And, and, and poetry is a kind of uh, service industry. It serves the soul and the heart. It brings people together. It writing it releases endorphins. One feels better writing a poem, even on the darkest of subjects. So it's a release. There's a healing, a kind of catharsis that happens when one writes a poem. And um, so I've been uh, passionate about poetry for a long time. I started writing poetry when I was a teenager, about 14 years old. But uh, I think I, I had the inklings of poetry uh, as, a, as a way of life um, from before then, even uh, from even before then, yeah. And, um, and then diplomacy, which is the career that I chose later on in my life, uh, was just uh, another manifestation of the same that, desire. How does your career in diplomacy also related to poetry become a... Right, well, I mean, that's right. I mean, yeah, I was anticipating your question. I mean, diplomacy is about bridge building, making bridges between communities, between people, between countries. And on that bridge, um, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of exchange. And, you know, you need bridges to connect. Otherwise, we'll live in isolated silos and be bereft and lacking for the lack of contact. So you you need, uh, and, and diplomacy, when you build that bridge, you build it to make peace, to, to heal differences, to find common ground between yourself and your opposing um, partner. I mean, a po uh, the notion of partnership is important, I think, to diplomacy. You are writing, I mean, you're engaging, uh, you're writing a Dimash, you're sending it across to your opponent. Where do you see go. Where do you see yourself better, in diplomacy or writing poetry? I, I don't separate the two. For me, the two careers have gone side by side, hand in hand. I mean, I won't be a diplomat forever. I'll be a poet until I disappear from the planet. So in that sense, that's simply a question of practical, you know, one can't. Uh, you know, the diplomacy is a sort of service to a state, a community, a people. Uh, but I think the role of the poet is also um, like that, you know. I mean, like a priest administers a flock, administers a community of believers. Well, a poet administers a community of, of like-minded uh, believers in, in the transforming power and beauty of art, you know, the, when you're writing poems, you're writing a kind of word music. And music, you know, is the uh, 
window to the soul, right? I mean, it's uh, so poems um, liberate places that uh, are very hard to reach inside of oneself. And ultimately, you feel part of a larger community when you write the poem. You might write it in silence or in solitude, but um, when you share the poem, it's like that diplomatic demarche. You're crossing over, you're making a bridge between yourself and the world, the reader, the listener, and you're crossing over that bridge with your poem. So the two careers go hand in hand for me. Uh, but I, I, if I have to pick one <laughs> that I will be doing until I'm, I've gone on, I, that will be poetry. Oh, great to know that. So your first uh, book in 1994, you, you have uh, won the, the Peterson Potter Prize. Uh, take you before that, what is your early inspiration uh, for writing, how the environment uh, affects your writing process? Uh, especially well, as an immigrant person, you move to different countries right, and right. also experience different experiences. I mean, I'm I, that first book, The Elephants of Reckoning, the poet and critic and translator A.K. Ramanujan called it a welcome addition to the poetry of migration. And that phrase has stayed with me for a long time, the poetry of migration, which I guess I've been writing for a long time. But I also now think of it as the poetry of disappearance. You know, the things that have gone that cannot be retrieved, they can never come back, but you write them down and they live again in your words, in the words on the page, in the memories evoked by those words. So poetry is about loss and staunching the flow of the blood, stopping it, you know, and healing. So, but you need the poem to wake, to both acknowledge what is gone, uh, to conjure it up in images and to move on because moving on is the only rule really. We're always walking ahead and, and we're always walking, we're always moving. So what is There's the a, first image that uh, like stick in your head from early childhood? You saw it and then you decided, I'm going to transfer it uh, into writing. That's a very interesting question. I, <laughs> I'm i not, you know, the, the first image that comes to mind uh, is, is a huge rat <laughs> that was crawling across in the backyard once when I was a kid. <laughs> and then a cobra that was about to, uh, bite when I was a baby crawling in the grass. But then I think of those, but then I also think of the elephant, that elephant that uh, we came across when I was a kid and it was about to charge our Jeep. And then somebody with us, the Mahout, spoke some words in the language that the elephant understood and the elephant stopped its charge. So I think of all these wild experiences with danger, with 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 the possibility of, of, of losing your life. And they, they marked me, but I did not lose my life. And the elephant stopped its charge. And then I realized and learned later that elephants are pacific animals. And they charge when hurt, when uh, isolated. So and then I started to learn about how we contribute to the traumas of others and we cause those traumas by waging wars and 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 betraying and uh, you know causing harm to others so for me uh, when I understood these things about human life I started to write about them with the goal of liberating myself and and any readers from the the harm of these terrible uh, impulses in human beings, you know, we can be, as uh, the poet once wrote, Eliot once wrote, I, you know, I murder and create at the same time. So you have the killing and the creation at the same time. And that's the sort of contradictory contradiction in which we live, you know. We make war and we make peace. Uh, we, we plant a tree and then we uh, chop it down depending where we are on the planet, you know, 
there seems to be a constant uh, seesaw back and forth. So how do we stop that? How do we d uh, work out this contradiction so that we can actually advance as a human race uh, and advance the fate of all the species that live on this planet? Uh, and uh, diplomacy and poetry, I think, have are necessary for that um, that process of, of finding a way to heal and a way mm -hmm. out of the labyrinth so in just, which we live. You also talk about uh, the healing and transforming feeling. Uh, talk to me about the day that in your life, for example, you wake up, uh, you are not feeling good emotionally, and then, but you have, but you were trying to write. How does that day look like? And in another way, can we describe poetry as uh, a therapy? I I agree with or that. a yes. healing process. Yes, I, I think poetry is therapeutic, and it does help you to heal. And you can wake up in a terrible state in the mo in the morning. Let's say maybe you have not slept at all, and uh, you're quite groggy, but you still have to somehow get up and go on with your day. And I, if you can find a way to walk, I would say, walk, walk in nature. And then if you can find a way to write, I think that would, writing is a kind of walking. You know, it's a, it's a physical exercise, a mental exercise, a healing exercise. So walk yourself on the page, writing. And I do that often. You know, this morning I wrote a, a small poem in Spanish. Um, because I wanted to walk and heal at the same time. And I also had an obligation because there's a newspaper once a week, I publish a poem there online in Spanish. And so I had an obligation to produce something to send. And uh, I haven't sent it yet, but I will later today. So yeah, so there are different motivations to write, but I think just the healing is the, uh, is, is, is you can't deny that is, mm -hmm. The therapy, the therapy, is is motivation enough. Uh, so you you are the founder of U.S. Mexico Fund for Culture and McDowell Colony. Uh, just wondering about that. Also, part of the work you are doing uh, to connect culture. Well, you are a person who. Yeah. Let me clarify. U.S. Mexico Fund for Culture and the McDowell Colony were institutions that gave me funding that uh, that gave me fellowships yeah 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 the fellowship sorry right Early. right uh yeah just uh, uh i'm trying to wonder because you're a person who uh grow up in different culture and in different environment how does this kind of fellowship help you uh to to practice the experience and the knowledge that they have and what is your advice also for people who were looking, especially immigrant people who are looking uh, for different writing fellowship? My advice is, is, first of all, to read as much as you can in your field and then write as much as you can and, and hone your art, you know, develop it and share it with others. Develop a, a community of people who, who look at your work and, and, and they themselves might be writing and you exchange work. So you get it to the level where it is ready. To, to send to magazines, to try and publish the poems, let's say, if you're a poet, and and then to look for a book publisher. Uh, foundations, fellowships, uh, I would say research the fellowships that are available. Look in your state, if, there, if the Mar state of Maryland, let's say, or some other state, every state, wherever you're living, uh, has fellowships for artists, for writers. Um, Look at the foundations, yes, um, but the most important thing is to is to write and to read, and to hone your work, and to get it published, if it's poetry or in in, in magazines, until you can find a publisher who will take on the the risk and the joy of publishing your work as a book, yeah. And once you have a book published. Uh, it becomes easier to find fellowships and, and support. As an unpublished poet, there are places you can try. You'll just, it's a question of how much time you devote to researching the options. 
and uh, sending your work in, following the guidelines. Often these organizations use a service called Submittable to submit your work. Sometimes you have it's free of charge. Sometimes you have to pay to participate in some of these. It's a question of what your means are and how. But I would uh, encourage the most important thing above all is to develop a daily, I would say, a practice of reading. Not necessarily writing every day, but but why not? There's no harm in it. I do, I do more or less write every day, and I think it's a it's a good discipline. Uh, for every hundred poems you write, you might have seventy you keep, or you might have thirty you keep. But if you don't write those hundred, you may never write the, find those thirty to keep. You see, so uh, I would encourage more than than less. And so, editing and trans and revising is very important. Write the poem, share it, get opinions, and then hone and produce a second draft or a third draft, and then send it out. Yeah. So you write also uh, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and also Haiti and Crow. Right. I just how is that uh, language important when you are writing poetry, and also how were you able to make the balance when you are writing? in Spanish and then translate it to French? How can you multitask also the writing in, in, in different languages? So currently well, you have a right. published book in three languages. That's right. I I, I published in French and Spanish and in English um, and soon, uh, and in Creole as well, actually. So four languages. But I, I, uh, I like to say that I, when I'm tired in one language, I might be just waking up in another. So I constantly go back and forth, you know. It's a game I play internally with the languages I, I know uh, of, of of keeping them in shape, you know. It's an exercise. It's just like running. Runners don't just run. They have to practice every day running and preparing. So in the same way, I have to practice my languages. Right now, I'm stronger in French and Spanish and in English. But... Um, and weaker in Haitian Creole and, and Portuguese. Why? Because I have not been writing in those languages lately. So I need to I need to come back reading and writing in those languages, to uh, and make it. Um, and it's not easy, but it's a wonderful, thrilling experience of having different languages to to turn to, to express essentially the same things. You know, one's needs, one's desires, one's loves, one's um, despairs, uh, one's ideas about the world, about politics, about the climate, about about the environment, and so on. Wh whatever the motivation for the poem, it is a it is a rich experience to have a, a a choice of languages in which to write the expression. Yeah. Um, Wondering. So that, that, that's my early uh, early in your first book the elephant of rocking reckoning yes or killing okay and then uh, also just we have also win the fellowship from the foundation for contemporary art i just wanted to, to to know the difference between uh your early writing uh has it has the like the dimensions of politics people and also culture how how is it different from writing your first book and then up to the f the book that you have published uh, in 2020 10000 step against the tyrant right this one right here this is the new book 10000 steps against the tyrant and i'm very very proud of it and it's in a sense it's it's a it's a book of political love poems you know it was written oh. in 2020 during the campaign against uh, the domestic tyrant, you know, Donald, the orange-haired fellow. And it was written also during the pandemic. So the pandemic, which continues, uh, you know, so there was the mother of elections and the mother of pandemics, and these were influences in this in this book. Um, so also, how does... How but the first book, like the the first book how, the, how the first book, sorry, was different from... I mean, there's an evolution and there's... And you say the same, you know you're a lyric poet at the beginning of your life you're a lyric poet at the end of your life i mean i'm a i would call myself or be people have said i'm a lyric poet i'm also a poet in free verse which means that i 
invent my verse forms each time I write. I don't stick to a particular pattern. Though recently I've been sticking to a pattern in the sense that I've been writing 14 line poems. But Lots of has them. that leadership personality show up uh, in your first writing? Do you feel that it was showing up in your Facebook or? Well, inevitably, when first, first writing, there's a certain innocence and a certain joy. It's the first time you're seeing the world and you first time you're expressing yourself in words in response to the world. Uh, and so uh, that freshness of that, that, uh, of that first look, uh, you hope you'll never lose. But uh, inevitably, as I've got, I've written and published 22 books in my career so far. And so inevitably, each one is a baby, each one is a child that I love, uh, but each one is different. And there's a certain honing of the craft. So maybe my craft is, 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 is less raw now than it was when I published my first book. But there's a word music in the first book a lyricism that is um, perhaps not in some of the other work uh, since it, it but uh, you know i it's very hard to know uh, how one's voice when you when one, one, when you discover your voice as a poet it's your voice but you deepen it you broaden it you add layers to it you know so that's what i i think i've been doing as a poet since my first book, mm. constantly well, working. Yeah. In 2020, uh, also, you have published, you have produced a, a record by, publish, you published three books in three languages. There's the, the Migrant State, and then Sur la Nostique. Sur la Nostalgique, yeah. Uh, Lorica et Tempo. Uh, just I'm just worrying because now you have published 22 books uh, and you're still going on on writing poets. What gives you that inspiration to continue writing and also publish more books? Well, sometimes the inspiration is just dealing with the solitude, you know, and dealing with the sadness, the sadness of exile, the sadness of migration also. And how do I deal with it? In my particular case, I write poems. I write about them. I write from it and I about it, and I'm liberated from this these chains by releasing them, writing, you know, and so I keep going. Uh, I also want to write beautiful poems if I can. I want to write poems that are that are speak to people, that 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 move people who read them. So I keep wanting to write in search of that elusive. A perfect poem, whatever that poem is, you know, there is no such thing, but yet you, you keep writing, trying to reach there, or achieve that. And I have stories to tell, lots of stories to tell from migration, from exile, from the war, the uncivil war, I call it in Sri Lanka, from other places, the war going on now in the, the invasion of Ukraine. These are all subjects for writing and reflection about human beings. My 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 story is human life. Uh, my subject is human life, but it's also animal life of all sorts. It's also insect life. It's it's also plant life. It's life and death, you know. And there's this dichotomy between life and death, and this inevitability of death, of dying, passing on, and writing uh, as a way of uh, of um, of capturing this music that's moving on, you know. There's a beautiful line in the poet Kavafi about the the music uh, of the Alexandria that you're losing, you know, and he captures that in a beautiful poem. And so I try to capture that music of the of my own Alexandria that I'm losing. One of your poems, you talk about Paris. What's going on? What's wrong in Paris? Uh, I just want, yeah, I just want you to read for us, if it's possible, one of your... One of my poems? Read with pleasure. Me. I'll mm -hmm. read from the new book, 10,000 Steps Against a Tyrant, which is published by Broadstone Books. Um, I, can, I can read a couple of poems, short poems. The Right Path. Let us roll America. Let us not look back. Let us seize the fellow by the absent coattail. 
Let us reveal the traipsing emperor nude, and let us remember and defend the rights of our virus dead. But let us do so with respect, with love. Why? Because Jesus says so. Why? Because we're not jackals and hyenas. Why? Because we have to get back on the road to the promised land. And was one more short one, the torch. Torch. The flame may seem agile, small, almost nothing at all. But as you carry it from room to room in the dark, the bobbing, flickering wick lights up mind and heart and gives hope. And the sun is waiting around the corner of morning to come on stage to rise. Two poems from 10,000 Steps Against the Tyrant. Uh, thank you so much, Andre. Uh, we have enjoyed that. I just want to know how people can find your work and also your books and how they can follow it, please. Sure. Uh, people can um, find my some of my work uh, uh, places like Amazon or, or in bookstores. If you're in Washington, you could go to Politics and Prose. And I think a couple of my books are available there in the main store. Um, you can contact Broadstone Books online and this latest book is on sale there for a, a generous discount if you're interested. Uh, Broadstonebooks.com um, 10,000 Steps Against the Tyrant. If you're looking for a special uh, lost books or rare books of mine, you could even write to me and uh, I could make some arrangement out. My email if you like, is um, indranmx at gmail.com, indranmx at gmail.com. Hopefully you'll find some of my books in bookstores or in Amazon or or in, um, or write to me, yeah? And, Thank you so and much, Andrew. And before you go, we I want us to share with, uh, with us what is next in your journey. What we'll be doing? What you Next to my journey, the... one thing I I hope I'll be doing is is writing <laughs> and poems and sharing them and uh, translating poems as well from different languages into English. Usually, um, editing books. I'm I've become a publisher uh, of poetry with uh, the poet Sarah Cahill Marin. We're called Beltway Editions. You can find us at beltwayeditions.com. And we're publishing a first book, an anthology uh, by six young Muslim poets who met together at MIT and, uh, and wrote poetry together. And it's a wonderful book called uh, Our Ancestors Did Not Breathe This Air. So you can look for that if you're interested in that book. It's, it's really a unique book with poems and, and paintings and photographs and um, our ancestors did not read this here. Just look for beltwayeditions.com, B-E-L-T-W-A-Y editions, all one word, dot com, uh, to learn about our publishing venture. And I'm editing the magazine Beltway Poetry Quarterly, along with two other poets, and we we are um, we publish uh, contemporary poetry and translations and reviews. So I'll be doing those things: publishing books, publishing poems. I'll be writing poems, I hope, editing them and um, going on into the good night um, poetically and lyrically. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Andren Amir Tahaj. Hopefully, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank would you. would like to see more and talk more about poetry and writing and also how we can engage more with writers. Thank you so much, Mary. Have Wonderful. a good day. Thank you so Shams. much. Thank you. All the best. Honor to you. No, my no, honor is mine. Thank Pleasure. you for coming to the phone direction. Bye. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for watching uh, the show of today. For for direction is talking about poetry and writing. I was joined by Andrew Amir Tahagam. He is a poet and also a diplomat and uh, award to win an international award winner for points. Uh, see you in a different episode, different topic. Uh, I was also, I had the honor uh, to be your host today. My name is Mary Apollo. 
uh, follow the four direction and send us your suggestions, your comment uh, on the section below. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good day.